Up with Crim begins now. Right now on Up with Crim, health leaders in Washington say they're scared of the rising numbers of the Delta variant. The public perception of where we are does not match what's happening in hospitals where people are coming in very ill. What they say needs to happen in order to beat the virus. And we're going to take you outside. You can see a little bit of cloud cover in the northern Rockies, but that cloud cover doesn't associate with snow just yet. This morning, President Biden says the military has fully withdrawn from Afghanistan. Now, what's next for the Americans that are still in the country? It's good to have you here with us on this Tuesday. I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Channing Curtis. Well, the aftermath of Hurricane Ida is just starting to be evaluated. Conditions in the southern part of the country will make it harder on the people who were unable to evacuate. The National Weather Service predicted New Orleans heat index could rise to potentially life-threatening a 103 degrees today. Louisiana's levee system appears to have mostly held up against Ida. Its electrical grid, though, did not. More than a million homes and businesses were left without power. Over 5,000 National Guard troops have been deployed across the state and some 3,600 FEMA employees are now headed to the region. Residents who evacuated were urged to stay away while first responders look for survivors. So far, two people have died, but officials are fearing that that death toll could turn out to be much higher. We know that individuals are out there waiting to be rescued. Please know that we have thousands of people out right now with high water vehicles and boats. Uh, who are doing search and rescue. It is going to be hot here, um, so I know that people are going to be making accommodations to go someplace where they can get air conditioned. Now, Ida was downgraded to a tropical depression on Monday afternoon. The storm is expected to continue to weaken as it moves north, though it could still cause some flash flooding in some places. Our former weather anchor on Up With Krem, Evan Narani, is in New Orleans this morning. He now reports with our sister station in San Diego and has the very latest from Louisiana. Today, residents across New Orleans and the state of Louisiana are seeing the aftermath and the damage caused by Hurricane Ida. One of the areas that we've been at today is this apartment complex in Kenner, about 10 minutes outside of New Orleans, where fire officials say someone tried to use a generator inside of their apartment, and that potentially was the cause of this fire. They say they're still investigating that, but in total, 24 units burnt to the ground here after this fire began. Uh, it is estimated that across New Orleans, about 1 million people are still without power more than 24 hours after this hurricane passed through. Winds at about 140 miles an hour. This hurricane made landfall as a Category 4 storm. We were here in New Orleans at our hotel room when this hurricane passed through. At the time, emergency services said they wouldn't be able to respond to people, and that's exactly what happened here when this fire began as the storm was passing. The people who evacuated, the mayor of New Orleans, says do not return to New Orleans quite yet. They are still responding to flooding and people who were trapped in their homes. They're still responding to about a million people without power, and they say that is going to continue over the next two, maybe even three weeks here in New Orleans. Now, another thing to note is that so far the death toll is at about two people. They say that number is expected to rise because they are still trying to investigate and respond to those calls that came in as Hurricane Ida was passing through. Outside of New Orleans. I'm Evan Narani, Krem 2 News. Well, we know it's going to be a hot one down in New Orleans today, but it's pretty cool here in Spokane. Yeah, quite the opposite, <laughs> that's for sure. And even breezy, even mm -hmm. kind of like a taste of fall. Just so a little taste. <laughs> if you like being hashtag basic. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> That's my what jam. What are you doing yeah. pointing? It's, it's my vibe. What are you doing pointing over at <laughs> What are you, on what still. are you talking no, about, Tim? I am team basic, guys. Listen, give me my Ugg boots and my pumpkin spice <laughs> lattes. I'm okay. I said it, because Channing will tell you. Yes, she I own it. all that. I love it. It's my thing. <laughs> Jeremy, are you ready for my hot you? take of the day? Are you what? basic? Uh, no, I'm not. Tim, you might be joining Channing now. What? 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 In the Ugg <laughs> life? In the pumpkin spice <laughs> life? Yeah, <laughs> Tim for sure. Yeah, you know I'm all about the flops. I'm all I'm a summer guy. <laughs> Team flops. Slides. That's my jam. <laughs> it, it is true. He's got a point there. Well, let's go ahead and get you out the door early on this morning. Tim and his flops. Well, he might uh, flip them the other way. That didn't really work. What? You know, like flip flops. Mm, oh, yeah. okay. It, 
See, Channing didn't like it. <laughs> All right, early on this morning, our temperatures are still on the chilly side. A little cold on the toes if you're wearing sandals. 47 in Spokane, 50 in Coeur d'Alene, 52 in Sandpoint. In Temps in the low 50s in Wenatchee and Moses Lake this morning. Air quality remains at good early on today. Hey, we'll take it because it'll ebb and flow back and forth between good and moderate throughout the day as wildfire smoke kind of moves around the region. We will also see some pretty strong wind gusts. Wind gusts up near 20 miles per hour over the course of the day is going to be oh, a little bit blustery along with some of those cooler temps. And keep in mind that all comes with not a single cloud in the sky. We'll be cloudless as we go from the 40s up into the 60s later on today. That's right, we top out in the 60s. 69 degrees is our forecast high, and that keeps us about 10 degrees below what is considered normal for this time of year. All right, well, thanks, Jeremy, for that. Looking forward to some fall-like temperatures. I don't yeah. know about the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to our big stories of the morning, though. This morning, the U.S.'s longest war has officially come to an end. The Taliban now has full control of Afghanistan. Now, yesterday, the last U.S. troops officially left the country. This grainy night vision image captures Major General Chris Donahue of the 82nd Airborne Division as he boarded a C-17 cargo plane the last American service member to leave Afghanistan in America's longest war. With wheels up, it was the official end to the 20-year conflict. The final troops left Kabul's airport exactly one minute before President Biden's deadline for withdrawal. The military mission is over. A new diplomatic mission has begun. With the U.S. military out, the State Department is now in charge of helping to evacuate Afghan allies and any remaining American citizens who wish to leave. Secretary of State Blinken says between 100 to 200 Americans are still in Afghanistan. President Biden plans to speak to the nation later today about the end of the war. In the rush to evacuate, though, billions of dollars in military equipment was left behind. And that includes aircrafts, Humvees and other vehicles. Officials saying the equipment was demilitarized so it can't be used. Well, here in Washington, the Delta variant continues to surge across the state. There are enough hospitalized COVID-19 patients to fill several of the state's largest hospitals. It's something state health leaders are calling both alarming and terrible. As of Monday, the state reported nearly 1,600 hospital hospitalized COVID patients. More than 180 are on ventilators. It means more people are dying. The head of the state's hospital association says there's a sense that more people are going back to normal life without a sense of just how serious things are. People are going about like having parties, going to fairs, Labor Day events, um, just real worry, you know, that that the public perception of where we are does not match what's happening in hospitals where people are coming in very ill. Experts are urging pregnant women in particular to get vaccinated. Only an estimated 40% in Washington have received the shot. One infectious disease specialist says the state may need to reach a 90% vaccination rate in order to beat the Delta variant. Well, today marks the end of the federal unemployment for the pandemic, but people are still out of work due to restrictions. Do I just say, okay, I need to go out and get another job and just like risk health and safety of family and friends around me to make an income? this morning, how people are dealing with the change. And we talked about today's cooler weather, but believe it or not, all of this cool temperature or these cool temperatures come with a bit of wind and that wind gusting to near 30 miles per hour today, unfortunately makes for high fire danger with our ongoing drought conditions across the region. We'll be discussing everything you need to know coming up after the break. But before we go to break, we want to remind you, Krim 2 News at 4 is expanding to a full hour. Now, we know how busy your evenings can be, but we're committed to bringing you more news and weather when it's convenient for you. So join Tom, Whitney, and Mark for your choice for local and national news on weeknights from 4 to 7 p.m.